From a billionaire startup to an e-commerce afterthought, home decor, home decor online retailer One Kings Lane selling to Bed Bath and Beyond for thirty million dollars, a fraction of the nine hundred million dollar valuation it held back in early 2014. This recent news raising questions about the valuations given to startups. And let's bring in retail analyst Mary Apner. Look, what, what does this tell us overall about the startup situation right now? Well, I don't think it's reflective of the startup situation. Rather, it needs to be addressed on a one-by-one -one basis. In this particular case, I think it's the problem of the flash sale websites that became all the craze, and not all of them are equal. And mm -hmm. this, in particular, has value presumably because of the bank or data. I mean, that's an names. unbelievable difference. It sold for less than thirty million dollars after yes. once being valued at nine hundred million dollars. My guess with this, and this has happened a lot in the U.S., is that these websites have started up and they buy the inventory directly from the vendors and they hold it versus letting the vendor hold it and then just process the sale when the customers buy it. Wow. What's happened with a lot of these is they have excess inventory on hand and no way to liquidate it and you know inventory is a retailer's worst enemy if it's not Big selling. Big win for Bed Bath & Beyond? I think so because you're going to, they're going to be getting names and possibly customers they've never had before and especially that elusive uh, wow. millennial customer. And their stock uh, doing pretty well over the past month or so at $45 mm -hmm. and a couple of uh, recent other deals I want to talk about here. We saw something similar with Guilt Group. Uh, it was bought by Saks. These yeah. sites popped up during the recession. Mm -hmm. Do these sales say something about the health of our economy? No, I don't think they do. That is a similar situation to the One Kings Lane. They had way too much inventory that they were buying from these upscale designers. So let's say they had a Prada flash sale. If it didn't sell, mm -hmm. then they were stuck with the inventory in their warehouse. Mm -hmm. It's not like you have a store to walk through and Very have customers point. buy it and there's no out price because yeah. you can't keep discounting it down to 90% off on a website. All right, fair point. A couple other deals that yes. we want to talk about this morning. Mary, Unilever buying men's rate Razor Merchant Dollar Shave Club for one billion dollars. What do you make of that deal? Well, that's a much different business model. That's something that Unilever's never had exposure to before, and it's really unique for them. Plus, they have direct access to the customers mm. versus going through a number of retail channels, which has been the way they normally do business. So this gives them more leverage for the future to create other businesses with this concept and to do some spinoffs. In my opinion. Opinion. Sounds smart. All right, Walmart recently paid $3.3 yes. $3 billion to buy online retailer Jet.com. So this is a huge deal that has yes. everybody talking yes. in a bid to compete with Amazon. Everybody's yes. trying to keep compete with Amazon. Will this help? I think it will help tremendously because keep in mind these are two parallel businesses. They both are ba basically after multiple sales and the lowest price. So this feeds well into Walmart's business DNA. Mm -hmm. And I think this will be a big win for them. Plus, Jet.com is moving on before everybody's had a chance to imitate their algorithms. So they're getting out earlier than others. All right, before I let you go, Mary, yes. as a retail analyst, can you answer a question that Tom Close, our oil analyst, and maybe tried to answer a little bit, but it's a tough question right now. Okay. Where did all these savings from, we're looking at just over $2 for a gallon of gasoline in this country right now. Apparently Americans have saved some uh, upwards of $40 billion from these lower gasoline costs. Mm -hmm. Are we seeing that show up at, at the retailers? Are they spending that at the stores? We can't figure out where all that money's going. For us and what I've been tracking for the past five years, there's an increase in the number of experiences that families want. They're spending more money on vacation uh, and experiences and also the home area. Look at what has happened with Wayfair.com. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we've been and seeing. And home improvement. Home, home Depot improve, and Lowe's have been doing very so well. So it's home and it's experiences. Very good point. All right, Mary Epner, thank you. Thank Great you so stuff. much. All right,